Donald Trump's call for a temporary ban on Muslims entering the United States sparked debate on and off the campaign trail. This morning, we're hearing from Muslim Americans. Republican strategist and CBS News contributor Frank Luntz led a focus group last night here in Studio 57. Frank, good morning. Good morning. Our discussion included 16 people, all Muslim and all but three born here in the United States. While there wasn't broad consensus on how to curb anti-Muslim sentiment in America, everyone agreed this is a conversation that had to happen. How does it feel that your faith is at the core of one of the most disruptive, divisive political conversations in a long, long time? How does that make you feel? I feel optimistic because this gives me a chance and us a chance to tell us to tell you guys who we really are. American Muslims come from 77 different countries, speak over 100 different uh, languages and dialects. We're lumped together a lot in the media, and largely the narrative is something of ISIS or someone else. That's not our religion. That's not our narrative. And I think it's time for us to take that back. I also think that it's important not to ignore the fact that all this painful conversation is not necessarily positive, even though it is an opportunity. Um, oftentimes, there are manifestations of violence of this rhetoric. Now, you said it's painful. Yeah. How is it painful? Because it's, this is, my faith is representative of part of who I am. Um, and for me to see that it has been so demonized is painful and it's scary. I actually did a call out to Muslim parents across the country to not watch the Republican debate in front of their children mm -hmm. because I knew that that uh, subjecting our children to hear the hateful um, stereotyping and the lumping of Muslims with uh, terrorism in front of our children is actually something that is psychologically impacts them. So that's how deep this is for us. But don't you want the kids to know the challenges that they face? I don't want my children to be subjected to uh, racism and the vilification of their faith. I will not allow Donald Trump to tell my kids um, how they should feel about being Muslim. Right. How <laughs> many of you are physically afraid? Oh, yeah. Because of you're physically afraid. There so has most been an increase you. in hate crimes that has been reported through the Council on American Islamic Relations, as well as the United uh, in the United Kingdom. There's been a 300 percent increase in hate crimes. But do you understand why people are afraid? I absolutely understand to a certain degree why people are afraid. We can't hide behind the fact that Americans right now, non-Muslim Americans, do feel afraid. Not because of the fact that their safety is concerned, because somebody looks different. We're not chanting death to America, okay, we don't have bombs in our hands, okay, we're just being ourselves. And this is a narrative that's missing right now. I'm proud to be a Muslim. I'm proud to be an American. And no one's going to take that away from me, regardless. So uh, i got to ask you guys, how did you feel when you first learned that the murderer in San Bernardino held your faith? Any, but every Frank, time that there's some kind of an attack in this country, every time that there's any kind of a crime, I'm literally praying, and I'm sure that everyone else here literally praying that it's not a Muslim. Before, yeah. before any facts start rolling through, ah. we're literally praying that it's not a Muslim. And when it is, I know exactly what's going to happen. The people that committed those heinous crimes, they were not members of my faith. I want that to be very clear. There is a problem. There's been too many American Muslims that have uh, committed violence. And their interpretation is such that this is in the name of religion. So I don't want to be, I don't think we can, um, you know, run away from that. There's been too many of these incidents. Are you Muslim first or American first? I am an American Muslim. I can be both at the same time. I don't choose one over the other. I am an American Muslim. I am both simultaneously. You know, there are so many other issues besides our religion. You know, this is not a Muslim only issue. You know, I'm an American. We are Americans here. Yep. You know, and we, we have so many facets to our identity. Yep. We cannot be characterized in this neat little box. Repeating that this is un-American, that it's un-American to be uh, hateful towards a group of people is historically inaccurate, as difficult as that is for me to say, because I want to say that this is un-American. This is not what our values are. We have, we have targeted, we have discriminated against. Uh, we've had internment camps of groups before. This, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is an ugly part of our history and hopefully not a part of our future. Frank, this is an important debate, a very important conversation that has to be taking place at America in this time. What came out of it? What was, in a sense, the essence of what you saw and heard here? Very deep frustration that nobody is listening to them, that they are the focus of debate, that they are the focus of all sorts of conversations, many of them negative, and that they don't have a voice that they're being attacked by the leading presidential candidate 
and no one is hearing their response. They were so grateful to be gathered in that room to have the chance to speak out. And by the way, Charlie, there's going to be a much longer clip of this on CBS N, so you can go to the web and see about 10 minutes of this because we left out so much. The mm -hmm. anger towards Donald Trump, the fear that they have walking in the streets every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are voices that and aren't heard. It, yeah. Do they speak to the responsibility of Muslims to get engaged in this controversy, in this conversation? They do, but they also speak, and, that, and I kept trying to ask them that, and they spoke to the responsibility of the media and of society not to label them and not to discriminate against them just because some people, in the name of a religion that they would argue isn't it's practicing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that they're committing crimes that these people yeah. end up getting blamed for. And, and they talk about the discrimination, and it is, it was very dramatic. For me, it was very emotional. I was trying to be diplomatic, but I'm going to admit something. Mm -hmm. I did not push as much as I normally do in these sessions. Why? And why? the reason why is because I wanted their voice to be unedited. I did not want to ever push them into saying things that they did not believe. And I have to tell you, their animosity towards Donald Trump is unprecedented. And what I would love to see is Trump at a Muslim community, mm -hmm. have him hear what they had to say. Mm -hmm. It would be so dramatic. Yeah, words are very powerful and can be very hurtful, but that's why it's so important you had this conversation. A reminder again, you can't paint anybody with one, one, one brush. Exactly. You cannot and, do it. But, and, but everyone's got to get hurt. Yes, you're right. Beginning of conversation, hopefully that will lead to some resolution. Frank Luntz, thank you. From Dearborn, Michigan to Los Angeles, we are gathering voices from the Islamic community as part of our digital series, Muslim in America. And all day, we will highlight those thoughts on our Facebook and Instagram pages. For more, go to CBSThisMorning.com.